right, hey guys. So we are Team Zany, uh, and we built a game called Hectokinetic. Hectokinetic is a fast-paced, competitive, multiplayer co-op, physics puzzler, shooter, role-based, capture-the-flag strategy game. <laughs> so this game is pretty wacky, does a lot of fun stuff, uh, and I will probably need to guide you guys through it uh, the first couple minutes so you see what's going on. Um, so the people who make up our team, I'm Colin Clancy. I did networking and game logic. Uh, then right here we have Chris Robert. He did networking and game logic as well. Uh, in the middle there is Rick Sel Bantog. He did sound and game logic. Uh, Chad Morse down almost at the end there. Uh, he did input, game logic, and was our integration of everything guru. Um, Andrew Shen down at the end did physics and art. Uh, Matt Jones did graphics and helped with physics as well. So this game started out uh, from a concept that Matt had over two years ago planning to take this course. Um, <laughs> it, uh, that's Minecraft, ignore that. Uh, for now at least. Um, okay, so we adapted this, uh, his original idea into a competitive PVP uh, game that would have a lot of replay value is what we were going for. Um, so it has a lot of fun interaction between players uh, and some very interesting physics. Uh, so this is the level right here. Uh, can you go back to the other one? So this level is called Tower of Power. Uh, the players will start in opposing corners, the red player over there, the blue player down here, and they will race to the middle corner there where uh, they will have a little skirmish. Um, they can shoot each other, they can kill each other, uh, and they have support players who will try to help them get to where they're going uh, and stop their enemies uh, from getting to the flag as well. Um, so <clears throat> they basically race up to the flag, which is up in this top corner here in this battleground. They have to capture it and then head back to their base to actually score with the flag. Um, the teams are made up of two players, the capturer and uh, the support player. The capturer is a ball who rolls from that start point and actually captures the flag and brings it back. Uh, the support player is a, a, a UFO, basically. They float over the map and drop terrain. They drop things that change around the flow of the game so that uh, they help what they want to help and stop other things. Um, Let's see, are we almost ready? Okay, so uh, I guess I can start running through the things that will be confusing for you guys at first. Um, there are a lot of different uh, things that the support player drops, uh, and these are in the form of either tiles or as uh, blocks, basically. So they can drop terrain, which is just a block, and try to wall off the other player. Uh, they drop other things, uh, so they have boosts that boost your speed. They have uh, directional boosts that can push you in a specific direction. Um, springs can bounce you upward. Uh, stuns can stop the player from moving. Uh, there is a random direction movement one that is very fun. Uh, and then there are mines, where if you run over the mines, they will blow up, deal damage, and throw you in a random direction. Um, the ground player also has some responses to these. Uh, the ground player can auto attack and fire bullets at the other ground player uh, and eventually kill them. And it also pushes them off a little. Uh, and then they also have a ground to air missile, which they can fire up at the air players to disrupt them. Um, I guess at this point, I should ask for some volunteers. Uh, does someone want to, uh, you over there and you right next to him want to come on up and play the game for us? If we can get it started, maybe. So we're having some build problems. Uh, 
computer seems to be frozen over there. Uh, but I could tell you a little bit about the game, how we developed it. Um, so one thing that you might notice about our game is that it has some very rudimentary graphics assets. We didn't have an artist uh, working with us, so we made all of these assets ourselves, which was kind of fun uh, and ends up with a really simple style, which we, we kind of like. Um, what else? I'm not sure what we're talaking about right now. <laughs> well, Diablo 3 definitely affected our development. Uh, there were about three weeks where we got very little done, and it was in this last week where we really, most of the screenshots that you guys saw, which you probably have no f inkling that they were for our game, um, they were very old, like three or four days ago, so everything looks completely different now. So, yeah, we made a lot of progress in the last couple days. Everything really came together. Uh, so, one of the things that we had a lot of trouble with was our physics engine. Uh, we wanted to emulate realistic like physics uh, for balls rolling up and down ramps, bouncing off each other, uh, getting shot, uh, and that turned out to be hilariously difficult. Um, we ended up having basically only one person working on physics, uh, Andrew Shen. Uh, he had some help from Matt, but Matt had the two-man job of doing all of our graphics. So. Uh, Really very glad that they both worked so hard and got what we got done with uh, for physics and graphics, which was pretty astounding. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what else to talk about. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So the original game was supposed to be a, uh, it was basically players running through a track of some sort uh, with a support player just changing the terrain. So th this idea wasn't really fully fleshed out, but what it was is there would be one or two uh, people just basically going on a roller coaster ride, but this roller coaster ride had a lot of hazards on it. So there were rocks in your way, there were stuff that you needed to get around. Um, so the support players would shoot out the places that you needed to go, or uh, give you ramps to get over things, or push you in the correct direction, or speed you up so you could get across a, a big valley. Um, so we changed that uh, to be a 2v2 uh, capture the flag game, where we kept the same ball rolling through level type thing, but we made it very controlled by the player. So the player uh, decides what to do uh, and where to go, basically, and the support player gives them options. So the support player can drop, there's actually an interesting part in the level where uh, the flag is actually on the other side of a void. So you have to hop over uh, this fall into death uh, in order to actually get to the flag, and then have to hop back out. So you really need help from your support player to give you the means to actually get across that gap. Um, so yeah, that was a... Okay, so Visual Studio crashed, which is fun. I'm surprised it wasn't IntelliSense. <laughs> so uh, we're rebooting now, and then we should be on our way. Does anyone else have any other questions so I can fill time and entertain you guys? Yes, up there. I stopped playing it for a long time so that I could actually get this done. <laughs> for Diablo 3, I would like to point out, they had 10 years, these guys had 10 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. So there was some leftover um, state from the last game when it crashed that has sort of confused the system, um, so we just wanted to do a fresh reboot. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so it was a name actually that came up uh, Matt came up with when he came up with the idea. So it's hectic and kinetic smashed together. Uh, so the kinetic energy of the ball rolling through the, the level, which we've changed into you're kind of influencing your ball's kinetic energy magically. Um, and it's a very, very hectic game. There's a lot of bouncing around. There's a lot of flying off the level. Uh, there's a lot of shooting other people. It's a lot of fun. It's really hectic. And there's a lot of rolling around.
So, hectokinetic. <coughs> Any other questions? So what we did is uh, we changed the original idea from some sort of track type thing that was preset or even randomly generated to uh, PVP. And PVP is really uh, player versus player is where the replay value really comes in. Um, it, there are a lot of different ways to play this game. There are a lot of different tactics to take. Uh, and that is only interesting because you have to play off of the other person's tactic and try to beat theirs, and they can always change up their tactic. So it's a lot about uh, the support player keeping options open for their, their ground play player to get around, and the ground player really making clutch moves and uh, being very skillful to actually do really well in this game. So we've played a decent amount of it in the past couple days with it actually working. Um, and it's quite fun. <laughs> oh, hey, we have a working version. <laughs> Would another thumb drive help? <laughs> oh, there's another question. Uh, we have built several maps. This one uh, we decided on for our uh, actual map because it fits really well with what we want the game style to be. But we have another, we had a test map that was uh, pretty simple but way too hectic. Um, it was way too close quarters. It was about a quarter of the size of the map that we have now. Um, and it was basically just a couple levels and flat where you just shot each other up and it was really short jumps to the flag and back. Um, so it was a little too fast paced, a little too hectic to really figure out what was going on. Um, there was another level designed by Andrew that uh, it, it was kind of like a spire basically, a king of the hill type of thing. So uh, players would spawn on uh, opposite sides uh, of legs basically leading up to this tower in the middle where you'd have to work your way up and fight your way up to get to the, uh, to the top level where you could eventually capture the flag uh, and then head back down. Uh, and then head back out. Uh, we ended up keeping this one because it's very easy to die in this game. And uh, so once you die, while the other person has the flag, in a lot of other maps, it was difficult uh, to make you stay in the game. So death was it. But death was fun in this game. And uh, we wanted to keep how wacky and how ridiculously you died so often. Um, and so we, we kept it fun by making it so every time you go and grab the flag, you have to come through that middle lane uh, and end up in that bottom left corner before you can head back out to your base. So anyone can race to that little section there uh, to try to cut off the, the player with a flag. So it kept, it never made you out of the game, basically, was the, what ended up working out well with this map. Um, th it's a very simple way that we made the map, so it's very easy to make new maps. Uh, but yeah, we ended up using this map because it fit what we wanted with the game uh, best. Any other questions? Yeah. Don't play Diablo 3 is the first thing. <laughs> um, it really takes a, a lot of work throughout the entire quarter. Um, we made very little progress for a couple of weeks, partially because of Diablo 3, but uh, there was just a couple weeks where we just didn't get much done. And I think we didn't end up finishing everything that we wanted to because of that gap where we, uh, we didn't really stay productive. But really, it takes up your entire life. And devoting your entire life to this class makes it awesomely fun. And it was still really fun. Uh, but you get something great out of it when you put in an immense amount of time. So just be prepared to have it eat up your entire life. Uh, so uh, Jeff just asked if there were any classes that I found prepared me a lot for this class. Um, 
I would say definitely one of them was 70, which is now 110, uh, CSE 110. It is another time where I worked in a large group to build something big uh, where you couldn't really do it by yourself. Um, I actually kind of lucked out and had people uh, that were much more advanced than me uh, who I was working with that kind of carried me through it. So I, I didn't end up doing as much development as I should have. Uh, but that definitely getting some experience working with other people to build something is, is really important. Um, I know definitely the graphics courses that Matt took uh, let us do graphics at all. <laughs> so usually your uh, group has two graphics people and that's what starts the core of your group is you have two graphics people. Uh, we only had one, so uh, yeah, Matt did an incredible job getting graphics done, but that's another one of the things. Um, other classes. Okay, so was there something that I learned about this course that I didn't expect going into it? Um, it didn't feel like as much work as I thought it was going to be going to feel like. Like I definitely did a ton of work, but it, it doesn't feel like it. I, it's not drudging work. It's it's enjoyable all the time, and it ended up being sometimes a little hectic uh, working with other people, but I, it, it works out much better than I thought it would. <laughs> hey, it's building. That's good. Okay, cool. That's never happened before. <laughs> Darn you, Microsoft. Do you want to work in a video game industry? Um, I think I do. I'm not quite sure. Um, but it definitely made me much more uh, realize that I can actually be really passionate about making games. So I'm definitely going to try to, <laughs> is I guess the way that I'm going to answer that. Yeah. Um, this quarter, I was also taking a GE, uh, Psych 161, uh, Engineering Psychology, and then um, 127, Networking. So only taking, oh, that's what I meant, sorry. Security, not networking. That's what I'm taking next quarter. Um, yeah, so just security and this and a GE, basically. So a lot of us try to keep our, uh, our class schedule pretty light so that we can really spend time on this class because you need to a lot. Oh, hey, we're actually starting the game now. <laughs> All right, so here's our loading screen. It shows you a very small corner of our map. Uh, that is the very first skirmish point that you will see. Uh, the players will start out racing to there, and we'll see what ensues. Uh, yeah, so, uh, well, it's a mini-map. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so there are two types of players in this game. Again, there's the ground player there that you can see as the ball. If you look down at the mini-map, you can see that player's air player that has a targeting uh, tractor beam, basically, uh, to show you where it is. So um, this mini-map will let you know where the other team is, uh, where their support player is, so where, if they're going to try to put mines on top of you or push you out off the level. Uh, you can try to avoid those based on seeing what's in the mini-map. Um, and here goes the game. So that's the red player starting uh, from their spot. I, I see someone set up a mine right next to him, so if you hit the mine, his health will go down and bounces around a little. So I'm not sure where the other player is right now, but it seems like uh, they can just race over to the, to the flag here. Apparently blue team's already got the flag. Uh, you might want to go catch up to him. There he is. Shoot him! Uh, so, <laughs> so you're able to left click to fire bullets at them. It'll take about 20 bullets to kill someone. Um, and then right clicking will uh, 
shoot a missile up so that you can disrupt the other person. Um, so one of the the interesting parts of this is there are very few walls uh, going off the edges of the map, so it's very easy to fly off of things. Um, stun, stop moves. Uh, you can shoot that block to kill it uh, if things are ever too much in your way. Um, so... Uh, one of the fun things about this game is setting up combinations of those uh, those tiles. So putting a boost into a boost into a mine will make you go like 800 miles an hour way off the map. Something like that. Um, so you can tell the uh, what air player is near you by the uh, the tractor beam colors. The blue player, or the blue team has a blue tractor beam. The red player has a red one. Um, so it is a little bit difficult to make it over that gap uh, to actually make it into the left into the pit where the. Well, that looks like it's going to be difficult. Do it! You can do it! <laughs> or you just get stunned twice. Um. So yeah, last ditch effort. You can take a mine over, and you'll take damage, so you're more likely to die. But. <laughs> So, <laughs> so one of the cool things, uh, that particle effect that was flying off of uh, the ball is when you have the flag, stars fly off of you. Um, I thought that was one of the, the best effects that uh, Matt added in. Uh, that one's pretty awesome. Uh, sometimes it's a little difficult to control where you're going because there's too much in the way. Uh, so one of the things that we spent a lot of time this last couple days doing is tweaking how the those tiles actually work. So getting the like the amount that springs push you up so you can't jump too high and fly way off the the map too easily. Um, making sure that stops didn't stop you for eight years. We had them set for five seconds and it felt like an eternity up until like an hour ago. Um, the <laughs> aim is important. <laughs> so uh, one thing that we try to do with all of the tiles also is make sure that they have an offensive use and a defensive use. Um, so things like the stun are really helpful if you put a, a bunch of boosts uh, in a row and then a stun at the very end. You can push your teammates uh, really far, really fast, and then catch them uh, down at, towards their their capture point uh, to make some interesting plays. Um. <laughs> Yeah, the directional boosts are a great way to knock people off the first couple levels. I... <laughs> and blue team is losing the flag. Take the spring! You can do it! Oh. <laughs> main goals, that was an explosion there from the, uh, the ground to air missile hitting the, the air player. Um, but one of the things we tried to accomplish is making sure that we had a very fun game to play. And <laughs> it seems like we've achieved that. It's at least enjoyable to watch. Uh, it's actually very fun to watch. <laughs> you can do it, Chris. I believe in you. I might suggest shooting down those blocks so you can actually get up. <laughs> and your support players and helping you very much get over to that. Someone help him. There you go. Kill him. Kill him. <laughs> no, 
has to run back up and catch him on his way back down. But he'll just fly off, and they'll both fly off. things that we implemented recently was uh, turning down the amount that you can control your movement while you're in flight. Uh, so that means the springs and the mines around the, the flag and the, that void there uh, make it a little difficult to, to get back home. There you go. Just fly right across it. <laughs> Setting traps is a lot of fun. <laughs> Uh, that was that was actually something that we changed uh, about a half an hour ago so that you could not we wanted to move the air player higher so that you could actually see really well um, however something went wrong with the build so we had to go back to a previous version that didn't have that setting set correctly but yeah we, that was originally as of like 20 minutes ago working so that you wouldn't see the air player uh, but this is the the air player screen you can see their inventory up at the top uh, they have three things and a direction. Uh, so directional boosts, you can rotate around uh, which direction they point. Uh, and uh, we actually also had ramps that you could put down to, <laughs> to just ramp, uh, get them uh, up to a different level they weren't on before. Uh, it ended up not working out well with the physics engine. <laughs> um, so you can see that uh, when they use up things, uh, that slot turns black, uh, and it shows them the next thing that they're going to get. So there's a cooldown that we originally had set very, very low. We had about one second before you could place the next block, and it made the game ridiculous. Uh, you would completely fill up the map with tiles, basically, and it was impossible to move anywhere. Um, kind of similar to how that is. Okay. All right, and so I think we're going to call this a draw because we've already taken far too much time than we should have getting it built. But uh, yeah, this is Hector Kinetic. Thanks a lot, guys. And I already answered all your questions, so. <laughs>